Well, hello and welcome back. We are going to continue today. We're going to do a little bit of a, uh, I guess, house cleaning, uh, some things like that. We're going to look at static files. And in order to do that, and actually, I guess as part of that, there's two things we're going to bring down to help us with building out our application. These are, uh, and that is going to be Bootstrap and jQuery. Now, these are very useful to us. If you haven't come across them before, they're going to be very useful for us to create a pretty interface. Uh, there's JavaScript and style sheets that allow us to tag things and uh, build out a very uh, modern looking application. We'll go and as far as that's concerned and modern and, and just slick looking. Now, as part of that, Django includes uh, the ability to have static files. And that is going to cover things like your uh, cascading style sheets, images, JavaScript, things like that. Now, these can be served from uh, a production server. So these could come from, uh, for example, if you use uh, Apache as a front end or Nginx as the front end, you could use the files, uh, direct them there, but this allows you to keep those static files as part of your, uh, your Django server, particularly in development mode. So I want, and because there's a couple tag words in that, I wanna make sure we covered that. So we start, uh, we're gonna go look at our uh, settings. And we should have already uh, the ability to, we should have static files already in our installed apps. And then down uh, somewhere along the way, you're gonna see a static URL and it's gonna be a folder name. Uh, it's just by default a static. So we created, we create a static folder. And then uh, I'm gonna start this time, I'm gonna download Bootstrap so if you go to getbootstrap.com, you can grab the latest version. Uh, we're just going to do the compiled versions. We're not going to be doing too much with this. We'll extend these properly. Uh, so this will give you minimized files, which will help just in general. So you download that. Oh, I had already downloaded. And uh, the other place we're going to do, if you just go to like Google or any of those kind of search engines and hit jQuery or go to jQuery.com, uh, it will probably pop up and allow you to download the latest version. Uh, you may be like me, so if you do, uh, like for example here, and we just want the compressed version. Uh, so if I download the compressed comp uh, compressed production version, then it's actually just gonna pop up, because this is just uh, minimized JavaScript, it's gonna pop it up in a screen. So I can, uh, probably the easiest way is I'm gonna take that, and I can go over here. I could create a new file. So, and I'm just going to paste that in, and then I'm going to save it as uh, jQuery. And I've already done that. So we can see here, I just called it because I know what version is uh, from what I just downloaded. Oh, oh I'd already killed that window. But uh, so I just went ahead and saved it as jQuery 3.5.1.min.js. Uh, you can name it as needed because you're going to end up referring to that name, whatever name you use. Now, as far as the bootstrap piece, uh, there's several, you're going to find that there is, uh, well, in this case, you're just going to have a CSS and a JavaScript folder. And what you can do is you can just take both of those and put them out in your static. I think it's going to allow me to do that. There we go. And so now I've got access to Bootstrap and jQuery. And I'm actually going to rename this just to jQuery. Well, jQuery man, just so I remember it's a minimized file. If you have not come across JavaScript versus minimized JavaScript, uh, there's basically JavaScript allows you to do some, uh, in order to make things faster, uh, you can remove spaces, you can simplify names. So where you might normally have JavaScript that is uh, has some long 
uh, you know, meaning use human readable function names and variable names. Uh, minimizers will reduce those things to something that is it's not human readable, but it is uh, I, I, it can be. Uh, it's just very difficult to read. Uh, ideally, the point there is that you're going to remove as much space as possible, making your J, your JavaScript file as small as possible. Uh, so when you have load times and things like that, obviously, if you have less to load, you're going to have a faster load time. So now we've added those. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and create a, in CSS, we're going to create a new file. And we're just going to call this app.css. Because this is going to be where we start adding our own uh, styles. We're not going to use that today necessarily, but we'll start putting those things in place. Now, what we want to do is we want to be able to now utilize those static files. And that's pretty easy to do. So we're going to come into our, um, our base file. If you remember, in our templates, we had base and uh, internal. And so these two are going to be included basically in any you know, one of them is going to be included in any file that we do. And so because of that, these two files are perfect places to load static so that we know we have access to that regardless of where we are. And that's done fairly simply with a command of load static. So now, and I'm going to put that in the other file as well. So now I'm going to be able to have access to these files. So the first thing we we would probably want to do would be, uh, you know, or one of the things we want to do would be to give access to our app level CSS. And this is done pretty pretty commonly. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a script tag. Whoops, if I can spell it right. And in that tag. We need our source, and this is where we're going to be able to utilize our static. So here, we're going to do it, it's in quotes, and we're going to put static. And uh, let's see, let's close that out. And within static, so this is going to give us, that sort of gives us our, uh, this gives us sort of our uh, base to work from. So in, within static now, if we want to load, we can do CSS because that's a folder within static. And then uh, app.css. Uh, actually, oh, I'm sorry. This is first uh, CSS, not JavaScript. So for Java, for CSS, We're going to use a, a link with an href, and we're going to tell it it's a style sheet. And let's go there. So that's our link. And then we can do script. We can pull in the files that we need. Um, I'm going to shortcut this a little bit. Uh, let's see, where did I put that? So I'm going to come in and pull in, uh, let's see, some basic, some common, uh, I'm going to get the basic uh, bootstrap stuff configured. Now, while I am tweaking this, uh, where was I? Here we go. While I'm tweaking this, and I'm actually going to do that before I pull in my stuff. We're about a title. Uh, while I'm doing this, one of the things that I have added in the previous uh, episode, uh, since the previous episode, I guess, is um, there is a link out on the, you should see it in the description for this uh, episode or for the previous episode, and it's a link to GitHub. Uh, within there, I am, uh, within there, I am saving uh, I'm doing uh, tags so you can grab a version and the tag by day. 
So for example, uh, after this, you'll be able to go for tag of day 14, and you're gonna be able to pull down the code in the state at the end of each of these tutorials. So this will allow you to jump in and take a look at these files and um, you know, edit them as you need to. Uh, you can pull them down, you can do what you want with them, but this will allow you a little quicker than me having to you know, walk through all of this stuff, It'll allow you to see the files. And so what I'm doing is I'm just adding in my support for Bootstrap. Uh, here again, since I've got static, it starts at, um, oh, that's a CSS. I'm sorry, wait, that is a, so I've got Bootstrap Men. Let's do Bootstrap Bundle. That's probably what I need. So I'm going to pull these two down, and this is going to pull some uh, JavaScript and CSS and some styles for um, Bootstrap. And this is really sort of boilerplate, I guess. So for now, it's really you don't have to worry too much other than hey, we're going to use that, and then the rest of the stuff is the same. So I'm going to take this, and this is typically going to be your use of uh, static is it allows you to um, have a single place to go for your, your normal files. And then I think a lot of times you're gonna end up putting those into, uh, by say normal files, your images and style sheets and JavaScript. And then you use these, uh, the ability to inherit from other pages and you can actually include all of that stuff, you know, relatively pain-free. And where do I wanna go? Let's see, I think I saved all those out. And so now doing that, uh, so I've included my uh, all of my pieces here. So I could actually go into, let's go into like the home page. And instead, uh, let's do, let's just do, um, I'm gonna do a little bit of playing around here. So let's do div, two divs, because we've included the uh, internal. And now we can do class oh, class equals. And we're going to utilize a couple of the bootstrap classes here real quick. Just show it here. So we're just going to, this will be the, uh, we'll call this left side and right side. And we're going to use one of the uh, built-in spacers uh, in order to, or layout tools to set these up. We're gonna do a left side and right side with the left side being, uh, let's see, it'll be a third of the width and the right side will be full width. And you won't be able to see necessarily how far the right side is, but now if we do that, and we go back to here Okay, it's running. Let's see. I, oh, actually, I'm going to probably need to restart it because I have reset my static. So now if I come in and go to my home page, I need to log in. And oops, I'm sorry. I need to come back here. And those need to be within a div row. And although we're not gonna spend a ton of time on this, uh, these things will start to become a little more uh, comfortable to you, I think, as we go further into this and we do some styling. So now if we do that, then, uh, and this is responsive. So if I were to shrink this down, what you're gonna see, as you can see, the right side comes over, but because this is a, you know, a space of four and a space of eight, there's a certain point before now, boom, it's gonna be start shrinking it down. But you can see where it shrinks it all the way down. The other pieces are not responsive. We didn't do those right. So what we can do is we can come in here and let's fix our, rather quickly here, we'll fix our footer. If I can remember where I put that, uh, that's in base. Um, and we could make this actually a row as well and keep that all in the same row. 
And we do that for the header as well. We can do that as we start playing around with our, uh, and we'll actually come back at some point and we'll clean this table up and make it a responsive table. So that's what I wanted to cover for today. And it was quite a bit of stuff there uh, as far as the downloads. It's not actually you know, too bad, but that gets us set up for moving forward. So uh, we will come back next time around and uh, we'll actually get back into cleaning some of this stuff, make it a little prettier. Until then, have yourself a great day.